Welcome back to the watch list. It's time to focus on the latest trends in M&A activity. Let's welcome in Dean Kiambo, partner of Armanino, and Melissa Otto, head of TMT Research, Visible Alpha. Melissa Dean, great to have you both here with me at the desk. Melissa, let's start with you. Bring me up to speed on what we've been seeing in terms of tech M&A. I've been out for a few months, and uh, I want to know what I've missed. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me on. It's an interesting backdrop. I think what we're seeing is that large mega cap companies flush with cash if um, and then you have a lot of small companies either on the private or the public side in the small and micro cap space that may be struggling in this environment of higher inflation and higher rates. Well, speaking of higher rates, Dean, we of course got Goldman Sachs's earnings. They're showing some you know, signs of life in the capital markets. They're getting rewarded accordingly. But this whole show, I've been hearing from guests who think that rates are going to be higher for longer, which we know isn't good for deal-making activity. So it's already been suppressed. What's to come? Well, I think everybody wants to know what's going to happen. I think what you really got to look at there is companies are operating the best way possible. In this environment, if we are going to be higher for longer, then folks are going to say, we're going to run our business the best way possible. We're going to have the best metrics. We're going to be financially fit, and we're going to be a target for others. When you talk about those organizations that could be looking for a lifeline, they're running their business in the best possible way so that when people look, they're going to say, oh, yeah, I want part of that business. All right, so Melissa, tell us in terms of what you're expecting. Who, you know, who's going to be on the buying block? Who's going to be on the, the selling themselves block, if you will? The large mega cap companies in aggregate are sitting on over $250 billion expected by the end of 2025, according to Visible Alpha consensus. So $250 billion is a lot of money to buy a lot of different types of tools, technology, companies. So even if, if just a percentage of that gets spent on Dean's space, that, that could be some interesting growth that those companies can bring in-house to essentially infect the mothership and bring about some growth and some trends that could accelerate their, the pace of growth that they have on a broader scale. But one thing that we haven't talked about yet is just regulation getting in the way, especially for big tech. I know we saw it with the Amazon iRobot deal. Will we ever get back to what it used to be if regulatory headwinds remain? Will they even be allowed to purchase other companies? Oh, nobody wants to talk on that. <laughs> the reality is, is yes, it's going to happen because people need it to happen, right? Um, we, we need to have constant innovation and some of the largest organizations can't build it fast enough. So they're going to have to go out and they're going to have to acquire it. Um, the reality is, is that it might have to be through smaller deals. It might not be the largest deals like the iRobots of the world or the uh, Activision blizzards, but it might have to be through smaller deals that make a lot of sense. And we'll have to see what the regulatory environment uh, looks like going forward. What parts of tech should we expect to see these? Obviously, when we talk tech, everything seems to be AI these days. Right. Is it going to be a lot of uh, AI acquisitions? Based on our analysis, the Visible Alpha AI Monitor looks at 63 companies in the space. We have 10 that are large or mega cap stocks. Then there are a whole host of companies 30, 40 companies in that 100 to 200, to say 100 to 500 billion dollars in revenues that are maybe cash flow positive or teetering there are generating a return that is attractive but maybe not quite what they need it to be because of the rising rate environment and the demands that they have around inflation, around talent. So it they may be feeling a lot more pressure and more openness to have conversations with yeah. Dean's companies mm -hmm. than, than they did in, in the I past. I think you're going to think about the strategics, right? It's going to be a whole lot of strategic. If we bolted this on, Caroline have, and I had that conversation, if we bolted this company on, what could happen? What would be the possibility of that? So whether it's around AI or it's even software as well, you could see a lot of that happening as Right. The, the reality is the digital transformation of, of companies is still real and still happening and, and very active. The other thing earlier, I have to say, you said, is it large companies with all of that $250 billion? What about the $2.6 trillion of private equity? <laughs> right. They could be active buyers as well. Yeah, the private markets are an interesting space. I mean, we don't really have data around that, so but I think that's a wild card. Yeah, absolutely. And it could be either companies being taken private and 
uh, scaling up or, or looking at um, some of the deals that have happened before and selling them off. So what's the timeline for this, Dean? Oh, everybody wants to know. All I know is this. When the IPO window opens, the M&A market's going to go wild, too. So we're starting to see some signs of life. We, of course, just Absolutely. had Reddit here just a couple weeks ago. Um, so are you thinking this year, or is this something that the Fed could potentially get in the way with? A stable environment for rates is normally a good thing for IPOs and deals. However, given all the news that we've had this weekend and last week mm -hmm. around inflation, oil prices, and the geopolitical risks, we might be in for a bit of a holding pattern until we get greater clarity there. And Melissa, I want to ask you because I was taking a look at uh, your at the notes, and you actually have your eye on Japan as well. Tell us why you're seeing opportunity there. And Japan is a market that has not really taken much risk. It, they were Japanese companies were essentially incentivized in a deflationary environment to sit on cash and not take a lot of risk. Now with that shifting. I wonder if we could see Japanese companies use their strong balance sheets, their cash positions, to look at some of these smaller companies in the private markets on, right. and in the public space that could be really compelling. Japanese companies also have had a leg up in terms of automation, ro robotics, all sorts of technological advances and patents that they own, but maybe looking for ways that they can complement their existing strategy and, and also spearhead ways into the U.S. market. So, Dean, I want to give you a chance to get the final word here. What's the, what's the takeaway for investors right now? Uh, the takeaway for investors right now is that there's a whole host of companies out there that are running really great businesses. You've got to find those businesses. And those, those things will take off. If they have a little bit more of an investment, I think those businesses are ready to really go out and, and take uh, more market share uh, in the future. All right, but first we need a, a bit more of a, a stable rate environment here. <laughs> yeah, I think people are baking it in. I think people are, are used to saying, "Hey, if this is the if this is going to be higher for longer, then let's let's figure it out and let's make the math work." All right, Dean, Melissa, thank you both so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your insights.